morning, everyone. Brother Mike here again. I'm going to start with the Gospel of Salvation that is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the Gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. We are saved by believing in the Gospel, that the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, God Himself, manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil, was crucified, died and was buried and raised on the third day. We are saved by the simple belief in the Gospel, because we have believed in the record that God has given us the testimony of His only begotten Son, and that life is in His Son. And it is only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ that we have peace with the Father. And we who were once afar off are brought nigh only by the blood of Christ. It is only by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Son of God that we have remission of sins and salvation. For without the shedding of blood there is no remission. The bottom line is this, all of mankind are sinners condemned to death. We are born into sin, born into fallen flesh, and Jesus Christ took our place on that cross, for the wages of sin is death, and he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see. God only accepts the sacrifice of His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God. This is why Jesus was known as the Lamb of God. We have no righteousness of our own. But once we believe the Gospel, we are clothed in Christ's righteousness, which is the righteousness of God. The only righteousness that God accepts. And it is only by accepting, placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Savior, that we are gifted eternal life, eternally redeemed and eternally secured, baptized by His Spirit into the body of Christ. One body, one spirit with Christ. Salvation is a gift of God, it is not of works, not of anything that we could do or are doing or will be doing. Salvation is a gift that not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. And we can boast only in what the Lord has done. We can boast only in the Lord, for salvation is of the Lord. And what greater gift, what greater grace is there than God gifting us eternal life, salvation, security and redemption through His only begotten Son, whom He gave in our place, so that we may be reconciled to Him. So folks, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, that is the simple gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Not of works. Nothing we could do. Certainly nothing that we deserve. Okay. And for my brothers and sisters in Christ, we all know 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'd like to give you a little bit of encouragement on um, the soon harpazo or rapture of the church, rapture of the body of Christ. So there are many teachers out there that they like to repeat that only those the holiest ones whatever that might mean or the ones who are doing the most works for the Lord again unquantifiable unexplainable 
they like to say that only those ones are going in the rapture. Well, let me give you straight from scripture what the Bible says about who's going. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. <clears throat> what is the only prereq prerequisite to being caught up? To being taken in the rapture? There you go. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That is the gospel. That is the only prerequisite. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And those also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. It's in the very first verse of the rapture passage. That is the only requirement to go. Again, we don't deserve salvation. Why would we deserve the rapture? We don't. It's all by God's grace. Okay? So again, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's the requirement. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, be encouraged. The rapture is soon. Look at the state of the world. Look at what is going on. Wars and rumors of wars, plagues, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. <clears throat> All these are the beginning of sorrows prior to the Great Tribulation. And again, for those who are watching this and aren't saved, and you don't know Jesus, believe in the only begotten Son of God, believe in the Gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 It is as simple as that. None of us can work in order to be the righteousness of God. All of us are fallen, even one sin, no matter how perfect you think you are, even one sin separates us from a holy and just God. And that is why Jesus Christ had to come in the flesh, because we could never make our way back on our own. And God knew that. That is why Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world. And he shed his blood not for a select few, but for the whole world, that all might be saved. Believe in the gospel while you have time. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching.